as we heard from our reaction in the picks, was Cassidy versus Ari. Not very frequent we get to see that matchup. No, and it's it's definitely staying there. They haven't dropped out, so Cassidy is remaining. Extinct is going to be on Cassidy. Obviously, feels comfortable with it. It's what he, fir he first had it highlighted, then did the usual troll rotate through, and then ended back at it. So obviously, thought about a few things, but. Uh, I wonder how this lanes are going to work out, whether it's going to be the 2v1, not too sure. With the Shen, we did see it switch up in the last game, in uh, the first match, sorry, of the day. Um, God, I can't even remember the teams. There's only been two games away. It's mm -hmm. the, the teams from the... Eclipsia versus... The team that didn't make it. The team Mouse. that didn't Mouse make it. <laughs> Mouse sports. <Yeah. laughs> That's a little belittling, isn't it, really? But, uh, no, I mean... If they have <laughs> not made it, then... You, you didn't make it, so we can't remember your name. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> harsh. Uh, but you'll be able to uh, spectate now, I believe, uh, as we move to the three-minute countdown. So, yeah, interesting lineups, the two teams. How do you make this out? So you're thinking potentially for 2v1s here. It wouldn't surprise me if they decided to go there. When they ended up picking the Corky, though, that is a slightly better matchup if they want to go up against Sona and Ezreal. And they're... Both teams are built for it, really, because Shen and Olaf are both capable of holding a 1v2. And especially since Curse wanted to do the fast tower push strategy last game, it wouldn't surprise me if they decided to go with something like that yet again and just see if Alternate can't deal with it. Because last game, they really didn't have an answer for it. The big issue for them, really, is going to be Extinct up against Pharrell Lord, because up until level 6, I see Extinct having huge issues controlling, especially when you factor in that Skarner also has weak gank presence until then, so that's really going to be the big hurdle for Curse to get over in this match. Yeah, and of course the, the, the classic Sonar Ezreal poke uh, strat that they have. So let's have a look through some of these runes. Let's, who, who do you want to aim for? Let's take a look up at Angus right away here. He has just the health, quintessence, attack speed in the reds, and armored magic resist, so nothing hugely different 1911 that's a little surprising i thought the shen would go for defensive masters but he's going for high trading let's see what he's going to be up against with kerp assuming we don't see 2v1s kerp's olaf his runes physical damage on his reds and actually he's went with health per level yellows and health quints and mr at 18 so very much at 18 focused and a whole bunch of health on olaf olaf does have a few health max health scaling abilities, so it makes a bit more sense for him. Nine offense, 21 defense, picking up the health regen mastery as well. He's very happy about those. Let's take a look. Let's see if there's any going to be anything creative. Let's look at the supports. Let's look at Cursed Super A's. We see some unique things on these guys. Three gold per 10 from his quince. He's got armor on his reds and his yellows to total 21 and 12 flat magic resist on his blues. The masteries, 16 defense, 14 utility. So that is the more defensive support spec that we've seen from these guys. Sometimes they'll go with the 21 utility, but this one, not so much. Specking the veteran scars and the initiator move speed as well as GP10. Let's see what Leo from Korea is doing on Sona. Let's see if he's thrown in some extra health. And of course he has 21 armor. So armor reds and yellows. Three health quintessences, no gold per 10 on that room page, 12 flat magic resist, and his masteries, of course, are actually 1, 8, 21. So he's making sure to spec that mastery for Ignite, really wanting to get that extra 5 AD and ability power if that goes on cooldown. Not, he's actually giving up 30 health to get that 5 AP and ability power on Ignite. Just a little bold of him. Of course, the 21 spec in utility as well, getting all of those good things. And that'll be the matchup, really, for supports and top lane. Yeah, and interestingly, I just noticed there, Super A's is only 1,500 ranking. He must not like solo queue <laughs> at all. Uh, but I think he's come across from EU Nordic East. Might be throwing him a bone there, but I think that's what it is. I mean, I've, I know Super A's has been playing in team that games for a long time, so... Maybe, yeah, like you're saying, I just might not give a monkey to about ranked. Yeah, I mean, if teams are able to practice enough 5v5 and they have enough scrim partners, then they don't really need solo queue rankings. Like Reginald, for instance, I think he's 17 or 1800 in solo queue. Like, he really just doesn't give a damn about that stuff. He's all about the team synergies, all about the team practice. Some guys can get away with it. Some guys really value the solo queue experience. Super is, maybe he has another count. Maybe he came over from EU Nordic, but if he didn't, then it's still not something that really destroys him, so it should be 
in all right for him. It's not super surprising, but it is interesting to point out. Yeah, and interesting enough, while I was sat with uh, Chaos when we were in the ESPN zone at season two, um, rather than jumping in solo queue, doing anything like that, he preferred to go into a bot game, 1v5. He said it's better mechanical training. <laughs> that's a little curious. Maybe he was... Yeah, that's strange. I know that Boy Boy also, when he was warming up at least for tournaments, would do a 1v5 bot game as Lee Sin and just run around the map making sure he could win. It's actually quite a challenge, so... Yeah. It's one of those things that does get you warmed up for tournaments. Now that we're into the game, fingers crossed, no pauses. Well, no Been pauses. Pretty fast I, tournament I so to, far. Uh, do load usual. in. Do my, do my okay. producer part. But, uh, yeah, oh, if you have just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, it is Alternate versus Curse EU, Curse EU. This time as the blue team and Alternate as the... Wow, that was pretty impressive. Alternate as the uh, blue team. The camera, the directed camera almost like went on my voice commands there and switched between them. I was quite impressed. Um, wow. If you are just tuning in, you'll notice that uh, the scores are wrong. Um, because, if I ever get click on it, it is one to zero for Curse EU, and yes, I'm aware that it says one, but Curse versus Curse right now. Don't worry, I am fixing it. Um, but honestly, it was a pretty impressive performance by Curse in that first game. They really were down in kills almost the entire time, but the pressure advantage, that's something that you only really pull off if you're quite experienced team, really. That's, that's not a strategy you see amplified that often or even pulled off, so they did a very good job with that there. Both extremely defensive here early on. Maokai setting his saplings down or his presence down at the rates. Going to be swapping over for the blue buff after that. You can see Skarner also going to be starting. It is Wolves probably going over to rates after that. Whether we see lane swaps or not, we'll be curious. It does look like we're going to see standard lanes, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. Although double golems being taken by Curse. Whereas Wolves being taken by Alternate, this is why Maokai is starting at race. They don't want to give up that level advantage early, but a delayed invade coming from Kerp and from Almud. Yeah, so Kerp catches the axe on. Ooh, extinct. And then he got the charm on him, which does mean they may cause problems with this blue buff. They are lingering around there. We do have, meanwhile, Maluna is obviously, uh, so sorry, and I'd sorry, coming around uncontested. For other Lord shows himself in that mid lane and takes a, uh, I can never remember the name of it, Null Sphere, that's the one, to the face. As it is, it is going to be an easy blue buff, and Maluna will pick that up, and everybody returns to lanes. So, let's take us through the lanes, as it is going to be a straight 1v1 fight. We had a look at Angus and Olaf. How will this one measure out between Kerp and Angus? Well, if we have the last game to go on, Angus loves playing extremely aggressive early. It's just that he has to worry about Maokai. Maluna actually coming in behind for Lord Ellen Lord. Yeah, early game, to force the game for Ellen Lord that forces him to uh, get away with that and flashed. Already used, that's an important tool, taking away that summoner spell. Just throw back up, talk real fast. Ignite's going down on one another. Kerp the aggressor very early on. So turning the tables a little bit on potentially the pressure. Sonic coming around the back. Don't think he might just be going for some counter jungling, or he could actually try a very early dive here. We gotta watch out for this one. Yeah, it's a dangerous, dangerous thing to do there. They need to push the wave up Kerps. Sitting there, Cyanide is sat, ready and waiting, present in hand to get that twisted advance onto Angus. Just have a look at him. Once he leveled up, he's leveled up. One in Sapling, one in Arcane Smash, and one in Twisted Advance. So he's fully prepared to go for this one. Here comes the Creep Wave. Now they're going for it. Kerb's going to come around. Kerb gets the Lightning Strike on through. Gets Twisted Advance. The knockup comes through, and he tries to flash out of it. Is it enough? Has he done enough to escape the damage? Kerb's taking a couple of tower hits, but Angus will get taken down by Cyanide there, and that was very well dealt with. And that's an early, early first blood dive. Good job there, bouncing the Edgar Maluno coming up. He's going to get a lot of experience out of this. He's trying to train down Kerper. There's no way he's going to kill them through Cyanide. Still, it's going to help Maluno get level 6 early. That's bad news for Angus in that lane, though. He's down 19 minion kills to 2. So that's going to be devastating. He needs a lot of help in that lane. And Maluno's going to have to pay a lot of attention to stop Kerper from pushing him in. So look towards this bottom lane 24 219 still pretty even between those two but you can see that Kraton has shoved that lane up towards alternate of course with super ass on that Lulu they are gonna go back and bite which means they felt they've done enough it's gonna be 788 gold so I guess it's gonna be a Doran's blade coming out 
for Crits. And when he goes back, and there is the Fairy Charm and a couple of wards and hail pots. And there is the Dawn's Blade. So, quick early back for them. Four and a half minutes gone. Um, so we were talking about the Ninja Tabby earlier on. I'm just waiting for right. actually Maluna. I'm just keeping my eye on Maluna. Brennan Lord, Lord doesn't have Flash. He has oh. returned to lane. Here we go. Comes straight back in. Flashes onto him. The Ignite guy goes down. They should have enough burst here. And it will be Extinct that picks up the kill. Successfully used. Remember, that's a return kill attempt, which they burnt that Flash out earlier on. That's an important thing for the junglers out there to notice. Once that Flash is burnt, come back. Make a return visit for your AP mid. And the big worry I had in Champion Select for Curse was whether Extinct was going to be able to deal with Ferelin Lord up until level 6. But because Maluno has given him multiple Skarner ganks, he's actually up 24 minion kills to 12 as well as that first blood. So getting out of that early melee phase for Kassadin is something they've done so expertly. It's a trade-off now because Angish was getting destroyed by Kirpin Lane. But Extinct is destroying Ferelin Lord. So they're really trading top lane for mid lane. And they're dead even in gold as far as the game goes. Well, it is spending a little bit of time in this top lane bush here. I'm pretty sure they know he's there. Sino's going to come around. I think, I think there's going to be a present landing on Maluna's head any second now. Sino comes around. Is he going to toss the present straight in towards the tri bush? Stares straight out. It comes around. No, he's not. But the curb's actually going aggressive. So there's a bit of a back and forth between them. And Maluna's just realized he's got to back away. Sino taken very low, though. He's probably going to have to go back and buy Angus and Kerp had a little back and forth. The Tether 2 as they went for it. And Maluna has actually come back to the tri-bush, but he's going he's gonna to go for it. He comes back around. Sinai just happened to delay, though. And again, they're just poking back and forward. Very aggressive stuff from Maluna here. Yeah, and I think he's mainly just trying to protect Angus from Kerp right now. He knows that Shen needs to get those mini kills. He's going to force Kerp back here, trying to gank. He earns the flash with the taunting being thrown out so he's really really trying to make sure that that lane recovers because he's pretty sure he's given extinct enough of a lead extinct just pinging level six good luck to jump on for Elnord really early and that's gonna be trouble for, her, for alternate so for Elnord forced to back away his flash is not available it is now back up so he'll be able to avoid the damage next time around but Angus and Kerp there's really been a lot of lot of coverage from the dragon meanwhile down the bottom here sorry from the jungler is what I was talking about Kraton back on towards Leo from Korea. Leo from Korea taking a bit of poke back and forth. Metalisk also being forced back. Very aggressive stuff between these two. And this is the back and forth. This is the aggression that you do tend to get, certainly in the European ADs. And this seems to be what's driven the Ninja Tabby suddenly becoming the, uh, the main choice between all the top AD carries of the world. We may finally have the winner to talk about this. And this is the thing. It has to do also with how much spell damage all these 80 carries are doing and the picks that have become popular. So Ezreal does, at least in lane, the majority of her damage with Mystic Shots, Essence Fluxes, and Arcane Shifts. So the auto attack trading is better with Ninja Tabi because you're reducing more damage than you would gain from the Berserker's Greaves. And the same goes for Corky really when he just has the Foss Bomb, has the missiles, has the Gatling Gun, it's better to reduce the damage than necessarily gain more just because it's a more efficient item. The Graves building the Ninja Tabi is the one that's the most surprising, but that could also just have to do with, his, with him having such low base attack speed. The Berserker's Greaves actually help him out less than they would help out all the other 80 carries since the Multiplier doesn't work as strongly with his base attack speed being so low. And he also has really high spike spell damage with his buckshot smoke screen and collateral damage so really the three 80 carries that are prevalent are somewhat 80 casters which makes it more important for them to reduce damage than to increase attack speed there you go there you have it from the horse's mouth directly from riot it's, uh, that is the explanation of why things are changing so everyone in solo queue when you do go oh my god you bought the wrong boots uh, no they actually haven't they've just been watching some pro games um, and you know what? There never is a right and wrong item, honestly. I don't think. Nope. You can, you can build what the hell you like, and sometimes it will just work. There's a reason Ultimate Bravery got, <laughs> got made. <laughs> <laughs> oh, diving in the middle, actually, for Unlord, getting a bit of poke on him there from Extinct, and again, just missing out. And I tell you what, Extinct's Cassidy really seems to be a very good counter towards for Unlord's Ari. I think so much of it is he's gotten the edge in the lane, especially early. He's picked up the Catalyst really when he needs it, and it's a good counter to Pharrell and Lord's Chalice or Thieves on Holy Grail build, because every time they go to trade damage, it's just until the next level where Extinct no longer cares about that harassment. 
Really an underutilized item lately is that Catalyst of the Protector, but rushing it still giving you those early lane advantages. Cyanide, though, gonna wait until Extinct tries to blink in for some morass, and then he's gonna wanna hop in for a gank. If Extinct does end up using his dash, we might see it right here. Here we go, Stan United though coming in, and they realize they've got to back away straight away. They're gonna put the damage down on towards Cyanide. Angus tried to get in there. True Shot Barrage backs across on towards Extinct. You can see Kerp also coming down. He might land the axe, just dodges out of it. Angus there, I don't think he realized it and just missed it simply. And everybody returns back. So a bunch of ultimates used there, a bunch of everything used up to try and keep them at bay. Actually, ironically, no flashes across the board were used in that encounter. They seem to both play it fairly safely, almost overly defensive or coming in a little too early to actually bait out a deathly engagement. I think neither team could really judge whether it was going to go in their favor and they were just playing conservatively overall. Want to look at the bottom lane, though. That lane's almost dead even. This game is actually dead even. You can see top lane for Angus. He's behind her Kerp by about 24, as well as losing the kill to the Maokai early. And then mid lane is the same, but in the reverse direction. Extinct up 69 to Pharrell and Lords 50. So top lane going to alternate, mid lane going to curse, bot lane dead even. Game's real close so far. Well, they're catching Extinct with a the charm there, putting that burst of damage down on him. Every time, oh, we dive down the bottom there. Super S is in trouble. Super S had to use the ultimate on himself, but he's going to go down here. He's going to have to work very hard to get away from this sapling that comes through. He still managed to avoid the damage, though, and Kraton keeps them at bay. There's True Shot Barrage going across. Super S just dodges out of the way of it. Very nicely done. You can see the two APs also coming down there. Pharrell and Lord in the bush. He's going to come down. Can he manage to catch anything on towards Kraton? They have a four-man stack on the bottom turret. They might be able to take the turret down. They might just choose to go for it. Yes, they are. It's something they've, we've seen teams, in, it, it sort of goes back and forth on the turret. It's like sometimes the teams will just go, no, we're going to leave this one away. Whoa, the burst up towards Pharrell and Lord from Extinct. Does keep in the bay and they defend the turret quite impressively. I was not expecting that. Yeah, Creatin spammed down his missile barrage really effectively to clear up that creep wave. That's one of the advantages of taking a Corky over, say, a Graves is just the sustained AoE damage as opposed to just the burst very difficult to push turrets against a level 6 Corky if he doesn't want you to get it. And Maluna with the Oracles, they might try to force a Dragon here. He gets the Flash Garner. Gets the Impale on towards Cyanide. Cyanide going to get dropped here straight away, and that's going to force the Dragon to be picked up. Alternate realize that they can't get in there. They can't steal it away. They have no smite, and they are going to have to back away. So Curse, pull the advantage with just that one clutch move. Counter push there. Maluna coming in a little bit late, and... Good on Curse for actually all sticking around after that gank attempt from alternate. Oftentimes when the 80 carry and support are below 30 or 40 percent health, unless they have the team synergy, they would go back. And yes, the top turret, even though it wasn't a trade really for a dragon, it works out that way because Angus didn't gain anything off of that. He didn't help his team get the dragon. That was really all them. So it's Kerp destroying that top lane, getting the early Sunfire Cape, and Angus really struggling to keep himself in this game. Definitely struggling against him. He's 35 CS behind, one kill, well, and one assist, I guess you could say, and a death behind. But in terms of gold, you can see it equates to 1,100 gold already between those two top laners. Mid lane, you can see, is very much a huge gap uh, already forming. Actually, tell the light, not that much of a huge gap. It's about 800 gold, but it's still pretty big when it's against between two da champions. And that's because Extinct obviously had that kill early on. So bottom lane has managed to hold on. They did manage to survive and keep that turret, but the first turret going down to alternate. This time around, it was Curse that pushed all of the turrets in the last game. Blue buff being given across to Extinct, and things return to normal, Jan. So with that turret down, are we going to see Kerp starting to roam? I think Kerp is going to try to impact other lanes fairly well. Now they might try to shove down the remainder of that bottom turret. You can actually already see Cyanide coming down. They could try a little bit of reversal of fortune here. Last game, as you said, they got the turrets pushed down. This game, they're putting huge attention towards the bottom lane. We have a potential four-man gank coming here. Pharrell Lord's going to get caught up by that ward. Will Curse be able to fall back in time? They're in trouble now. Oh, crescendo. Perfect from Leo from Korea. They're managing to flash across. Super S has to use the ultimate. He's not going to survive. Stand United on Creator, though. Creator might be able to get side by that. Good taunts on towards Pharrell Lord. Pharrell Lord gets burst down. Collateral damage. Sorry, he's not a collateral damage. It was the bomb coming through. The big bomb does manage to catch him. 
And well, very nice turnaround there. Angus catching such a clutch taunt. And now we can see we've got Extinct coming around. Is he going to be able to dive on towards them? He will go in there. He's going to get a three man dive. It's going to be Leo from Korea going to be the target. The turret going on towards Angus. They're trading the damage. But unfortunately, Creaton has not been able to join them, which is why this might backfire. Extinct got no mana at all. Can't do anything at all. That ultimate use has had to keep them at bay, but they're all very low. Creaton has backed off, and everybody keeps away. But while this is all happening, Kerb is just farming out that top turret. He's taking full advantage of the fact that Shen has to keep leaving that lane. So Kerb not going Ooh, for aggression extra pressure from instead. Whoa, Creaton just diving around. I'm pretty sure Kerb can run away. He still has his ultimate and flash if he needs it. They're just trying to make sure he gets scared off. Just well, wasting no, as much no, time Skarn as he can. Off. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, it's coming around towards the Tribush. Maluna has got him pale ready and waiting. So he's going to come around. Kerb's going to go in there. Hasn't used the ultimate yet, I don't believe. He forces the flash away. Will he go for it? No, he won't. And he does back away. And the ping comes down. They've got to be careful. For other lords about to come in towards that bush. Charm goes through. The ward was there. And they do back away. They're going to clear out that ward that's just been placed. And wow. Whew. Just like the first game, this one's pretty lively. Just a huge flurry of action. Skype call is breaking up for me. Hopefully that isn't applying on the stream nope, a little bit. That was really good pressure. I think we'll be fine. I hope you're fine. Yeah. Okay, good. The gank, uh, even all the way back to the gank bottom, that was about two minutes full of action. Extinct over dashing a bit with Cassidy and could not quite finish off in the turret, running himself out of mana, and then just up and down curb. Really, it's been alternate applying all the map pressure this time despite being down in kills as opposed to curse it's not quite as defined as it was last game but it's really almost the same style curse was trying to employ overall though i have to say curse does seem to be almost one step ahead they seem to predict what alternate is going to be doing they're just getting a little bit outplayed right now whether they can transition that into some good plays here once they get the first turret we'll see if they can turn back their pressure style as of last game, Extinct getting very strong. Looks like he's actually going to be going. Oh, Super has been Maybe caught. for an Abyssal Scepter, and oh, he gets caught out. Super has been caught. Had to use his ultimate, but he's definitely going to go down here. He's always flashed out of it. He's flashed out of it, and now Maluna's going to go in. He impales for Lord also being dived by Extinct. For a Leo from Korea, though, uses Crescendo to take down Super S. Extinct <laughs> comes across, takes down Leo from Korea in reply. But very, very good use of Crescendo just to say, well, I'm here. Might as well get a kill. Gotta say, really heads up play by Leo for Korea. He realized that Extinct had went over the wall to fight for Realm Lord, and they could not quite burst him down quick enough. Maybe a bit of a miscommunication between Curse, thinking they could get more than one kill out of that bait, and the bait turns into a one-for-one, one, so both supports end up getting dropped. Both supports really burning everything in that engagement. Ultimates down. After the end of the day, though, the kill went to Cassidin, and the kill went to Sona. So Curse does come out slightly ahead of that trade. Yeah, meanwhile, Kerp was just continuing to shove that lane. And look at it. The turret He's getting already far down. Ahead. 689 hit points, taking a big chunk of damage. They did manage to pick up the middle turret off the back. And it is 2-1 in terms of turrets. They're going to walk through that ward and take it out. They're going to continue on around here. And they immediately pinged it. Maluna's backing away from this one. And, well, alternate. They want to get the dragon. I'm not too sure on the timer of it, but they seem to be in position. They seem to be prepared for it. They're tossing out the presence in towards Super S. Super S lingering off the side of Lulu. And Kerp, they know where Kerp is. So it looks like it is going to be Curse that are setting up for this one. I don't know the timer on this. It's got to be due. They're all they're lingering, hanging around. Yeah, they're both paying there a lot of attention on it. And of course, there it is. Looks like they're going to be trying to force that 5v5 team fight here. Let's take a look at the ultimates here. Super Race's ult is back up. Crescendo's got about 10 seconds. For the most part, everyone should have. Yep, Skarner ult coming off cooldown as well. All ultimates going to be up for this. Pretty much all summoner spells as well. Only two flashes down across both teams. So if we see a big fight here, it's going to explode. Angush has his ultimate up, so he was going to split push. While they poke around, really the longer Curse can delay this, the more advantage they will gain. It's on alternate to force something to happen here. If they decide to go, they have to go soon. Seeing as the split push will eventually come out from Angush. Yeah, so Angush is on, on that top lane at the moment, farming it out. Cassidy is very much split off the side there, so Extinct wants to sort of come in from behind, cause the damage, which is why they're trying to catch on towards Kraton. They've caught him with an axe, and he's had to Valkyrie away. 
and he's had to avoid the damage quickly there so Leo from Korea pops the speed buff tries to turn around another axe back in towards Maluna this time and Extinct has come around the side has joined them pings go down they've le leashed out the dragon Will they have enough to take this down? They can see that Maluna's going to try and get in and smite it. Smite race. Who goes? Did, didn't happen. It was going to be Malco. They've managed to catch it. Cyanide gets it down. Cyanide took it down very low. Creaton actually taking a true shot barrage across the face. Maluna getting dropped. That's going to be one, two. Castanins trying to desperately get away, but Metalix is all over him. He will get the kill. Metalix picks up a double kill, and that is going to be Curse coming out horribly on the back end of a big, big loss there. So they lost the Dragon and they lost two members and a double kill for the AD carry. The big thing that really turned that fight is Angus tried to alt in on top of Maluno, but they finished him off before the channel could finish. So he never arrived into that fight, turning it into essentially a 4v5. And that's one of the big reasons that during the World Championships, all the channels were used during an initiation instead of in response to an initiation because that's the danger when you let the other team force onto you. That's what Alternate did there. Get the dragon, get the turret, and get a decent advantage going right now. And not only that, they pick up the two inner turrets, sorry, the two mid turrets, the outer and the inner turret, both going down. Really, really big win in that fight from Alternate, and that turned the gold to their advantage. 3k gold difference, it was very much even before that. 5-4 in terms of kills, 4-1 in terms of turrets. But that fact that that gold is only 3k, and they've got them four turrets, tells me that the lane farm was actually a pretty big win for uh, Curse. That Ooh, Angus getting caught out in a little charm, which immediately pulls the Baron onto him. Baron Nasher is not happy right now. I still remember yeah, the days you used to kind of poppy push him around the map. <laughs> so long ago, remember the days of the TF double goal cards done, we could just go on and on about the things that have changed for the better in League of Legends, but let's look at the lane farm really to see how big of an advantage they've really garnered, and I'd have to say the Olaf lane, Kerp against Anguish, huge advantage for alternate, but the other lane, Skarner against Maokai in the jungle, 92 to 64, 80 carries, 165 to 147 for Creatin over Metal X, and the mid lane actually dead even at this point, 130 to 130. So actually, lane farm, when you add it all up, is pretty much even. The majority of that advantage is actually just from the three turrets and the one kill. Still got to say this game is very close. Curse hasn't quite captured the lane pressure that they could create in the last game. And Extinct, despite the early start, hasn't really seemed to have that huge of an impact in teamfights yet. He has to power up a bit more going to really be on him to take Metal X out of these team fights, especially with that double kill he picked up in the last one. Fed Ezreal's are extremely scary, and there he jumps on a Metal X right in the middle lane. Huge poke. Diving straight in, Extinct's getting caught in the damage there, and Maluna's also being poked backwards. Maluna might get dropped. Crescendo goes through. The ultimate from Lulu is not enough to save Maluna. Maluna does get dropped, but Extinct tries to take down Metal X, but he's not dropped. The Ignite's running. He does finally go down. It's a Lulu that actually picked up the kill, and Extinct does manage to get away from this one. While it's all happening, though, they are diving up towards the top two, and Angus gets taken down on the top two. So Cyanide and Kerb combine to take that down. Definitely position to reverse for alternate here. Pushing onto Curse. Curse already 1 0 up in this best of three, but it's looking like Alternate might be able to take this one. The poke coming down, trying to get the charm on towards Super As for Eleanor Lord going aggressive. Have they got enough? Doesn't matter. He's going to go for the inhibitor turret instead, and the inhibitor will follow. Although Creaton is back, is it going to be enough to keep them away? It is. They keep them at bay. They just lose the turret. Not the end of the world for Curse yet. It seems like in these games, Ooh, the going aggressive. just all happen at once, and they're just going in for this. Casting well on behind. Should be able to disengage. Yeah, Valkyrie from Creaton there. He really wanted to get in that one. Is he going to go for another Valkyrie? He's got 13 seconds on it. I doubt it. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't really run into the charms there. Kerp's just off the side. He's like, well, going to linger here. Oh, he, Extinct might him. catch him. No, they're not going to walk into it. And he just backs off like a boss. Doesn't even flinch. So, really, action does just seem to happen all across the map in these games. They're doing a very good job at splitting their focus within the teams a lot of times these guys have trouble organizing multiple pushes at once but this is just a mark of actually a team that has quite good synergy alternate pulling it off slightly better than curse this game curse had the edge in the last one as far as split pushes and now once again curse has to be on the run because this chase from alternate looks like it's going to catch super rays out 
It does. Super S, he's going to get caught, but Extinct is there. Are they going to turn this? Creaton is there as well. Now they're going to come through. Stan United is not available there. He's actually just used that to a lot. He's just come in, and there's going to be popping on towards him. Extinct actually trying to get away. Lulu Ultimate was used on him. Creaton taking down very low. Kurt, one more axe. Is he going to be able to dodge it? Cyanide takes down Maluno. Creaton desperately trying to dodge away from anything. Just train them away. He gets caught by Kurt's axe. Lulu also, sorry, gets taken down. Kurt manages to get him. Angus goes down as well. It was actually Sona that picked it up. Leo from Korea managed to finish it off. They're pinging on the inhibitor. And then they go, no, I'm going to go and clear that top wave instead. Oh, they're going to dive towards Extinct. They managed to get twisted advance. Extinct will get dropped. No! Manages to cut out the ultimate just on the last shot. True shot barrage misses. And now, do not go away. Just don't sit there. Just walk back to your base, you lazy son of a... <laughs> Finally, he goes back. And they will now have a big creep wave going on towards that inhibitor. They're not going to go for it, though. Instead, they're having to back out. They're all taken pretty low in that fight. Long, long fight. Looking more and more like Alternate is getting control in this game. Curse hasn't been able to get out on the leading edge of any of these fights. And they do get chased down very effectively by most players on Alternate. They now have double Shirelia's Reverie, one onto Cyanide, and one onto Leo from Korea as well. So they're very much... A train-focused team. We saw Kerp was able to just duel Creaton and chase him down. Really, Corky needs to get those items going. He has Mercury Treads. He's probably trying to reduce that slow duration from Undertow and making it so he doesn't get trained down. And here we actually see Extinct diving in on a Frelon Lord. Here we go. It might well be able to get him. He's going to ultimate away, though. Cyanide is there. They're going to keep him around. Kerp now comes in as well. Extinct's going to have to start backing out, but Maluna suddenly pops in, shows his face. Gets a quick burst on towards Cyanide while that's all happening. Now you can see Metal X coming in. It's a very much another extended fight here. They're going to try and go for it. For Ellen Lord, remember, had to back away, so it's more of a defensive move for Alternate there. Just protecting their AP carry. Just a sliver. For Ellen Lord, we lost it in all the action. Actually got out of that with about 15 health, so that was a fraction away from being able to pick up another kill on a For Ellen Lord. But I have to say, been the rest of his team really supporting him. He's 027 on Ari. Hasn't been able to clean up any kills himself. Got bullied a little bit early by Extinct. All those early Maluna ganks really put him back. But as a team, they're really stopping Kasten from being effective. They haven't let him finish off any of those kills. And when Kasten does jump into the fight, he's done a very good job of focusing him down. And with this map control, they're now picking up yet another dragon, which is just going to extend this lead for them. So Dragon goes down, and like you say, 5k gold difference now. Alternate with the lead. Can they close it out? That's the question. They have that lead. Can they convert it into a win? They need it. They are 1-0 down. It is a best of three, and it is for a place in Paris. It's no small prize to get in this one. Of course, it also means you've got to play Moscow 5 when you get there, which is not so oh. great, but... They're going to try and dive on towards Shen. Shen does teleport, but just as the sapling landed on his head. Uh, but it, the uh, teleport had still gone through. Now the target's back on Extinct. Extinct in mid going to be very slippery, very hard to pin down. Here comes Kerp. He's going to try and go for him. They really need the chart. Actually, Kerp just stopped and stood still. He was just like, no, so not going to catch him. What is Curse going to do to try to hop back into this one there? Team fight doesn't seem the strongest. Maluno losing that Oracles earlier on in the fight, yet to pull up a, pick up a kill for himself. Just the Aegis of Legion on Skarner. Normally they'd want to get the Lulu ult onto him or Shen and just kind of train down their priority targets. But it's getting turned around on them a little bit. Olaf has been able to just beeline towards Kreata and take him out of fights. Extinct has not been able to wise assassinate. They're actually pushing, but this, if they push here, they're going to corner themselves into a fight with Alternate, but Alternate actually running into Baron. They may be able to disengage this yet. If we see a fight here, Alternate would have an advantage unless they get some kind of miracle suppress pick onto Metal X or Ferelin Lord. That would be the way Curse wins the fight. So Curse won this fight, it seems. They're, they're purposely backing themselves into a corner. Are they going to try and... Ex they want the fight in the jungle. There goes. Angus goes diving in. Is he going to be strong enough? That's the question. He tries to take all the burst damage. Crescendo is used. Goes on towards Angus. Creatons, meanwhile, at the top. Let's spin back up towards the top there because Maluna has been dropped. Super has been targeted. Extinct's going to get one kill on for Ellen Lord. He does. He survives it just about, but double kill already used. Look at that. All four of them in the exact same time flashed across. Impressive, impressive. They really wanted to kill Creaton. They knew how much it meant. And that was only person that survived was Extinct. So it's a four for one engage.
They had to make sure once they clear off that 80 carry, if there's only one damage dealer they have to deal about and they knew Extinct was low, that they'd be able to rush for this Baron and immediately they run all the way across the river into the Baron pit. You can see now Extinct going to want to harass this, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to stop this double buff onto Metal X. If anything, he's going to jump in and try to delay this a bit. He might be able to get a kill, but this looks like it's going to be a clean Baron for Alternate and it's probably going to be a kill on Extinct as well. It is, they will pick it up, and they're gonna turn things around. And that is a Baron, 14-6. And wow, the gold, oh, they've got extinct Red. with the sapling. Oh, actually, no, he's Metalix. The, the sapling showed him up, though, and Metalix did manage to finish him off. I thought he'd got him with the sapling. <laughs> Just a random toss in there, but wow. So that puts him down, actually. Down and out for a uh, timer of 32 seconds. And honestly, I'm not too sure what Curse are going to be able to do to come back into this one. They dominated the first game. They are really, really struggling in the second game. They're surrendered. The surrender vote comes That's out. 16-5. Uh, 6-5, sorry. And, well, you know, we said it ourselves. We didn't know what they were going to do. They didn't know what they were going to do. They'd realize.